Hold on, stop. <laughs> Welcome back to the shit show 2.0. Okay, boomer. Damn millennials. Wow. <laughs> Did not know that. Even flirters who who are obviously mentally ill. Oh, this is gonna go downhill real quick. <laughs> Is going on and welcome to take on the world. Swap, 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 swap. With your truly, the old Jonathan and Lexi and Mike D, as always. Um, we're here getting ready to do uh, one of John's topics. Yeah, and I, I do, I do like, like, you throw some topics at me, like, and I've seen this before. But I like when you throw topics at me that I don't know a whole lot about because I love researching this stuff. I'm good for that. I'm good for some like weird shit. Yeah, you know. And Lexi's last topic, uh, we just wrapped up. Uh, Gus Laprint. Louis Laprint. Gus, we call him Gus of a friend. I, I I would like to do go back to our horror movie <clears throat> one and do just to like narrow it down to I want to do um Pinhead because I was watching like the whole classic? back. Yeah, like the whole backstory Just Hellraiser? of Hellraiser and Pinhead and like crazy, his character. Yeah, like I don't want to give too much away. Okay, we could for do a future it. episode, but you know, well, I, I, I add, that to, add that to add that to the list. It's June, dude. Well, okay, we'll wait till we'll wait till uh, we could do that there fall. October. We have so much time. We could all pick like three different movies and do them like just release them in October or two different movies. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Okay, all right, so. There you go. So that the future thing is to you're going to do Pinhead. Yeah, the, the backstory of Pinhead from like. So your your movie will be okay. Hellraiser. Yes. And I I'll look at some of the backstories of the other characters too, <clears throat> and let you focus on Pinhead. And I think you I would have probably, You can probably get really into that. Oh, oh I, I I love horror movies, so yeah. it's like. There are just so many good ones. I, don't, I, I was like, it would either be it would either be Jason Voorhees or. I almost said Freddie Mercury. Freddie <laughs> Krueger. Freddie Krueger. <laughs> but then I was like, oh my gosh, we're Michael Myers. I love the house. Oh, no. exactly. So you would have been great on our horror. They show. had it so in the shitty. It's okay. October comes around every year. I got cigarettes. I can't wait <laughs> for the, I don't know what I'm going to do, but I'll have to do like uh, like different nails. And spaghetti. I'll have to do different mm. nails. Yeah. So, 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 so because yeah, because horror that. is is my shit. I love horror. I, I, like as soon as he as soon as you guys said that everybody pick a horror movie, my my brain starts racing. What am I gonna pick? And I'm gonna pick something so off the wall that you guys, yeah, are gonna be like, what the fuck? Yeah, yeah. Well, hey, uh, speaking of horror movies, did it's in the genre, but the there's a new Evil Dead coming out. Oh, I can't wait. And Bruce Campbell's gonna be in it. Yes, but he's been, it, he's, it, not, it hasn't. He's it, been in all of them. It, did it already come out yet? Uh, I don't think so. I don't think it, it has. It's, it's on one of the streaming services, I think. <clears throat> I'd like to see a preview for it, if they have any. I just heard about it. I didn't really research anything into it. But it's going to be on one of the streaming services. So I'm God, like, you see that? No. Not it on my face again. Good, Bastard. good for you, buddy. Lucky you. <laughs> HBO Max. Yeah. I kind of like this whole COVID thing where, like, stuff's not going to the theaters and just going yeah, right to Yeah, but everything's oh, opening up and everything's going to the theaters something. again. Did I see this? Now, don't get me wrong. I would love to see movies in the theaters. I just hate people. Yeah, and but you know what? Have you been to the theater in the last year, too? No. The seats are so big. Even if you're sitting next to someone, you're not really it's next so to them. Nice. <sighs> yeah, no, Listen, yeah, I know. You live down in, like, the Reading area, right? Yeah, we go to the, the, the lounge chairs. Fox Berkshire? Yep. Yeah. Just stop bitching, then. It is great, but I would rather it's just perfect. You just take away the usually go on buyers. Christmas, Christmas that's, Day. So that's there's like two people there. It's great. Yeah, we saw the um, what was the last Star Wars movie there? The last Star Wars movie. Yeah, and uh, dude, that, that, I'm not a big Star Wars fan. I just didn't really get into it. Why? Why do you say Star Wars? Because Lexi's wearing a Hawaiian Star Wars shirt. <laughs> so the I'm not even gonna get into it. Because I'm gonna get hammered here. I got two Star Wars fans. I'm already, I'm already up. Be, I'm already up. Okay, ready. watch your mouth. It has a 2022 release date. What's it called? 
Evil Dead Rise. Schmidt! It's written by Lee Cronin and produced by Robert Tapper with uh, Sam Raimi and Bruce Campbell serving as executive producers. Okay. All right. It's pretty cool. Pretty cool. So, topic this week is the old infamous, it's not really infamous, famous, maybe not so much, uh, it mysterious. It was once called the eighth wonder of the world. Oh. That would be the Coral Castle. There you go. In Florida. Which I had seen, I saw a, a documentary on it before. <laughs> But then when I started looking into it, there's a lot of cool information. So in my research, I focused on Edward, how do you pronounce his last name? Leeds Gallen. Leeds Gallen, that's it. Uh, I, I, I focused on him. He's the guy who built it. Um, but By I, himself. I wanted to yeah. know more about him before the, the Coral Castle. Right. So here we go. Oh, so much cool stuff. I have all these pictures uh, pulled up. Are you gonna Are you gonna put pictures on top of this? Absolutely. Okay. Cool. You have cool. to. I'm gonna just flash them up as we're going through, and, so, and let them see what what what's going on. I don't know if I should. I'll mention it later. We'll get right into his um his history. So, born January twelfth, eighteen eighty seven, in Latvia, and some sources say Russia. I think Russia was well, Latvia it, was part of Russia. It was I the, the so. Russian Empire, Empire or whatever. coalition or yeah, cocksuckers. Yeah. Commie bastards. Um, true, very little is known about his early existence, except his parents were not wealthy, and he only had received a fourth grade formal education. He was a sickly boy who spent time reading books, helping him to th to develop a lifelong yearning for knowledge. Now, this is like the second one we did where the kid was sickly, mm -hmm. and all he did was read. Yeah. Right, yeah. So there's something to be said about reading. Reading is an escape. Definitely will not make you stupider. No. <laughs> he became a stonemason in practice. Actually, he was encouraged to become a stonemason when he they realized he was sickly to father his to to pursue his father's career. Right. Um, so then I guess he became a stonemason, practiced his craft in Latvia after coming of age. And what would that age be like? Ten. <laughs> With Latvia, uh, probably sixteen. 16 I am stonemason. Yeah, probably sixteen. Screw you, lazy bitches. <laughs> they make rocks together. <laughs> Edward Leeds Scallon was 26 years old when his 16 year old fiance, Agnes Scoopst, Scuffs, broke up with him one day before the wedding in Latvia. He decided to immigrate to North America. Okay, that makes sense then. So, like, he's getting ready to get married. They've been together, I don't know how long. I, I, I don't know if it was an arranged marriage. She's awful young. Which yeah, is why I'm 16. thinking 16 is probably coming of age. Right. And she says, nah, I'm not getting married tomorrow. Like, how does that work, though, if it is, like, an arranged wedding or if it's, like, because, like, that's coming of age and, like, they have, you know what I mean? Well, you, you, so, you give your give the your wife's dad some goats or some... I guess so, but, like, really I mean, nice how does it work for her to be able to break up with him then? Thinking this shit? I don't know. Weird. It's a whole different freaking... Uh, Listen, Scuffs, I want my goats back. <laughs> yeah. Hey there, Scuffs. You didn't turn my goats into fucking burger meat, did you? <laughs> so, anyways, he gets butt hurt, decides to immigrate to North America. Rightly so. I would do the same thing. In that age. April 7th, 1912. So, this is right around the turn of World War One. I. I think World War One was 1914 that yes. started. And uh, he arrived in New York City. God, that must have been a hell of a fucking scene. In that crazy time on the wooden boats. Yeah. Just sickly people. coming people. in all the time. And him being a sickly person himself. Oh, absolutely. Uh, so the fact that he actually passed the test and became an immigrant is miraculous. Uh, somebody, call it, somebody call it divine intervention. <laughs> Anyways, uh, he was looking for work around the East Coast until August. Finding no work, he moved to the Pacific Northwest. Whoa. He went from East Coast to West Coast? Yep. Mm -hmm. Shit. 
Because there's a logging boom out there, and and there was ready work for people. Okay, I see. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Okay, makes sense. So now th this information was from the census. Okay, so in a census in nineteen his draft registration and then the census. Okay, this right here, seventeen. His draft registration stated he was self-employed and engaged in axe handling manufacturing. That's very important back then. Uh, nineteen twenty census data shows he resided in Reedsport, Oregon. So he's in fucking God's country. Yeah. Yeah. In winter 1922, contracted he contracted tuberculosis and moved to Florida for a warmer climate. He brought and developed a parcel of, or he he bought and developed undeveloped, and undeveloped. undeveloped. Unde und what is it? Oh. Undeveloped. It, it was. You mean like knock trees and shut down? Yes. It was like I it would just be developed. No, it's undeveloped. It's undeveloped, which means that there are trees. It's not good land. Oh, okay. It's not good so for anything. Once you develop it, you you raise the trees and and you. Okay. you you put right. a building on so it. So he bought 10 acres of land and cleared the land So, uh, for a par uh, as his parcel of land in Florida City. I, it was, was it Florida City? It was some other city. It was Hold on. somewhere in Florida. Somerset, I think, was the... <clears throat> well, he moves it then. He does. So oh, yeah, you're right. When you're he right. gets tuberculosis before he moves to Florida... When he moves to Florida, there's this guy that finds him wandering the road and, like, walking. And, like, he's like, oh, I'm looking. This is why I was like, oh, my gosh. So the documentary I watched was Voy It was led by Leonard Nimoy. Wait, can I interject just one tiny thing? Yes. Edward Lee Scallon was 90 pounds. Yes, he was tiny. 90 pounds. He was small. That's like three of us. So, this guy finds him, and he still has tuberculosis. This guy says he is so sickly. He is just like, like this is like advanced tuberculosis. So, this guy picks him up and takes him to his house, and he and his wife nurse him back to health. Oh, I didn't hear any of this. This is an older documentary, so this probably, this has like information probably... Oh, it's Leonard Nimoy, of course, is old. Well, that's what I mean. Yeah. So, anyway, this guy picks him up and uh, takes him home. He and his wife nurse him back to health. And he tells this guy, I'm looking for a piece of land that I can build, like, essentially a paradise for my sweet 16. And everybody's like, who's this sweet 16? <laughs> this, is, this, is why, this is why I said this makes sense. So every nobody else knows who a sweet sixteen is. It's just like some mysterious thing which adds to like the kind of like almost conspiracy theory or like supernatural aspect of it. Because we'll get into what actually happened, but just because of the context of this whole thing. There are people that actually knew him and like were there when he was building it. It's really, really cool. Okay. But I wanted to add that in here because they nursed him back to health. That piece of land that he got was actually from this guy. Oh, I didn't know that. Oh, shit. Yeah, mm -hmm. That's cool. Okay. So it was like on his property, kind of. Oh, all right. Anyways, continue. So he buys his parcel of land, 10 acres, knocks down the trees, and then over the next 28 years, he constructed a massive structure he called, quote unquote, Rock Gate. And decided it to the girl, or, uh, dedicated it to the girl who had, had left, left New Year's before, before. Right. Sweet Sixteen. Six, six, he six, called six, her Sweet Sixteen, and nobody knew who it was. They just thought it was like, oh no, maybe his, you know, his love passed away. Or... Oh, he's just retarded. No, like he's he was just obsessed. He's coughing up blood. He was just obsessed with this well, girl. The guy, his heart was broken. Exactly. Yeah, I can attest to that. So, uh, he worked alone and mostly at night. Uh, he worked alone and and mostly at night. Lee Scallon quarried and sculptured. He refused to allow anyone to view him while he worked. Now, I heard this, but then I saw video of him working while people were walking around the property. I don't think it was real. What? Like, I don't think that, oh, that what was kind of work was video. he doing? Oh, oh, shit. Was that the power? Wow. Yes. Why? And... Oh, I guess it's getting that bad outside. 
And we are back. Uh, it's it raining. Scary. It's raining outside and we lost there power. power outage. And it just went really dark in here. I had to hold Michael's hand. And John was not holding my hand. He was holding this other stuff. He was smaller than his hand. Much smaller. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. So we're, we're, we're going to edit this out. Uh, we're not editing that. That's staying. Well, we're, no, I meant the part where I'm like fuddling, fuddling over where the fuck I was. you right here. He worked alone, mostly yes. at night. Yes, right. I read that. So, so refuse to watch anybody, any, have any, anybody watch him work. We were talking about the, the videos that there are of him working. I don't think that those are video, videos of him actually doing anything. But, you mean he just was pretending? No, like I don't think it was him doing any of the things that are in question. Anything in No, it shows him lifting the blocks. I don't think He's so. He's just doing busy it work. It does. I don't think so. It, I didn't see it. Children, Leonard children, Nimoy did not tell me. Children, no, you shut up because listen. Children, listen. Leonard, no, no, Leonard Nimoy would have because this this video just came to light not long ago. Leonard okay. Nimoy is God, he's, so therefore he's you're Spock. wrong. <laughs> he's Spock. He's beautiful. He's just very logical. <sighs> he's so good. He was a treasure. After teeny teeny teeny. Oh, that's what I was going to say. Is that where I'm at? Yeah, yeah I was going to say there was this kid in this documentary that was like, yeah, I was like maybe like five, six. You're seven years old. That's not a teenager. He touched me, my no no spot. No, but I'm saying like it was like a kid, and he said, "No, no, don't go there." There he was just touched my no no square. There was <laughs> a uh, like a door that he had built so that the kids wouldn't be able to get down the steps and like get into like his workspace because okay. that people used to go there all the time. Like it, like it was fine. Like it was like a garden almost. Right. Um. And they used to like play around, like the kids would play, like it was a park. Which I'm not it is. Lie, that's really good. I, I told I you. I called bro. you gay, but that's good. It's a hefeweizen. It's a hefeweizen. There's nothing it's gay not about gay. hefeweizen. It's, it's, a, a, it's, a, hefeweizen. it's a German beer. I understand bro. that. It's uh, hefeweizen. You know what I got from all the umlauts and the. <sighs> ah. What's this? That's gay. <laughs> Why is this in front of the cool knife? Fine. It belongs in the trash, but <laughs> it belongs in the trash. I'll get that later. Cool. I'll get that later. All right. The teenagers claim to have witnessed him working, saying that the coral blocks moved around like they were hydrogen balloons, like they were floating. Yes. See, these kids were clearly on drugs. Clearly. So Coral Castle is not actually made from coral at all. It's not this coral. This is what I was going to say. Okay. It's sandstone. Limestone. Limestone. Thank you. He sculpted 220,000 pounds. Of 1,100 short tons. Of what the fuck does that mean? Oolite. Oolite. A short ton is short of a ton. A so short ton is 2,000 pounds. Of a ton. Two tons of one ton short. No. Uh, it's 220 pounds. Or it was supposed to be ore. Oh. 100, 1,100 short tons of oolite limestones. Oolite limestones are sometimes called cap rock because it's found near the surface of the ground and can run as deep as 30 feet. Now, what's important about this is the land that he chose for this. Now, he went and he looked and he looked and he looked. He passed up all the land that was good for, yes. like, fertilizers and stuff. Didn't he, he get his... chose an area that was bedrock from the top. Didn't he get his limestone from, like, a northern place and then haul it down? I think so. No. To... Mm -hmm. uh, the documentary I watched said it was limed on site. Or, uh, oh, yes. Yeah, it a lot was. of it. A lot of it, but I think they said, okay, maybe I'm wrong. I don't know. Yes, I'd, I believe. And it wouldn't be the first time. Obviously. Just people, yeah. people thought he was getting it from someplace else and bringing it in. Well, there are there are pictures of him where he actually, you could see where he uh, dug up the limestone. Mm -hmm. And it's like perfectly cut. Like, you could see it's not jagged or nothing. Which, I'll hold my thoughts on this one because I always shoot my load way earlier than possible. And we you know guys that. already say, we you know guys that. already have it written around there. Oh, you just fucking wait. So anyways. <laughs> uh, it's for, uh, what is it called? Uh, oolite is formed when a calcium carbonate is deposited on the surface of spherical sand grains composed of concentric layers of ore. Oils. 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 His creation would eventually become known as Coral Castle. He used only basic tools as he was a man of modest means. Used, used salvage wood and old auto parts. The only advanced tool each gallon broke 
or spoke of was using a perpetual motion holder, which I I, I looked this up, and I, I looked up what the hell this thing was, and I don't think it has anything to do with the way he built these things. No, no. Uh, are you sure it wasn't like the the teepee, like the tripod that no. he made? The perpetual motion holder is basically if you charge uh, a magnetic circuit, mm-hmm. it will hold that charge in perpetuity until you discharge it. Oh, is that how he made his electricity? Well, because they talked about him having like an electricity machine. Right. It, right what he has. Let's, like, let's not go too far. We'll touch on that later. So, so in other words, Lexi, shut up. Well, here's the thing: is my documentary was obviously cooler than yours. Because <laughs> they, they said they had that, but he... go ahead. Let's... John's staring at me. Jesus Christ! Whatever. You know what? Is it getting better? I, no, I liked it from the first step. Okay, good. It was an. Uh, first he built a house castle out of limestone blocks and wood then he gradually constructed the stone structures for which he is now famous he named the original castle Ed's Place that's kind of queer yeah. hey welcome to Ed's Place <laughs> come on into Ed's Place little boy that's like uh, is what's some ice cream I got Mackey's, puppies in here isn't Ed Mackey's the one that they go to that's like the it's supposed to be like the gates of hell or whatever isn't that what that's called? I don't know. Maybe just make that up. No, it's from Ghost Adventure. Uh, like no, I don't watch that stupid okay. shit. It's not stupid. So that one was actually really creepy. The Gates of Hell are in Pennsylvania. Yeah, I know. It's every time I cross the border. <laughs> Ed's place was located in Florida City, Florida, in 1923. He opened the Coral Castle to the public, offering tours for 10 cents. Yes. I saw a picture of that sign. It was super cool. I uh, actually have a picture of that. That's what I had all those pictures up. I think we need to put that in the uh, the TARDIS. What? A little invite from Ed Leedscallon. <laughs> <laughs> Coral Castle. Uh, hey, but, but you're 10 cents here, bitch. <laughs> in 1936, he decided to move and take the castle with... Oh, this is... I didn't know that. Yeah, he moved the castle. He Shit. took it. Okay. Because people oh, kept bothering him. There was like a um somebody there was a group of people that tried to rob him. They like roughed him up. Fucking bad. And bastards. he's like, you know what, people are like coming around too much, like I just want to go someplace else. Like this is freeing me in my sweet sixteen. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Which is weird, just, but it's my sweet sixteen. Oh my gosh, the one lady in this documentary, it was like an old lady. She's like, Yeah, he just always talked about his sweet sixteen. She just never got older. Must have been nice. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, I love you, lady. He had all these white stains all over his jeans. It's, I don't understand. Oh. That. It's limestone deposits. It's limestone deposits. Continue. It's limestone. It's limestone. <laughs> it just won't come off. Once it gets in, soda does that. <laughs> if you ever like mix up like a bunch of baking soda with with water, it gets weird. You like fling it on stuff. It looks really funny. Oh my god. <laughs> In 1936, he decided to move the castle with him. He spent three years moving the components 10 miles to its current location outside Homestead, Florida. He named the new place Rocky. They said that he hired a truck driver from town with a flatbed, and he would tell him to, like, oh, just go over here. Like, I'll put it up myself. Like, just give me a couple of minutes. I'll call you back. It'll be up here. So and he, he would had, put the pieces on the on the he flatbed had the himself. Whole thing dug out like the whole. It was block by block. He so rebuilt it. So it was the whole coral castle. Yes, yeah. everything. The, everything. The homestead. He didn't dig anything out of homestead. Just erected everything and put it together. I think there was digging done at homes because I think the, the homestead site oh, also has. Excuse me. That's what I thought. Uh, the limestone there. I think so okay, too. But so. regardless, like he would tell him, you know, like. Oh, just just walk over there and touch your movie for five minutes. Yeah, just go over there behind the corner. I'll call you back. And he would load everything himself. Like, how weird is that? Go get yourself some Grado's pizza. I'll be right back. (laughs) I can't wait to get to the part where they tell us how they did it, because I didn't think that they ever found out. All right, so no. uh, This is an interesting fact. Leonard Nimoy told me that they never knew. They didn't, and it was just recently. No mortar was used to fasten the stones together. They were put together in such precision, no light passes through the joints. Mm-hmm. Now this is this is reminiscent this of is like anti gravity. All the shit that like in 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 like Machu Picchu. This is how they're saying uh, that they built it. 
Yeah. Uh, uh, God, well, they, they actually have video of people cutting this limestone with, like, it looks like a big, a big the, the old logs, yeah. logging saws, and they just run water through it and run this saw. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it makes a nice straight cut. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it's limestone, so it's, I think it's relatively soft, especially yeah. when it's eaten half alive by cor- uh, salt water. Yeah. So, so uh, maybe this is a good time for Lexi to tell us about the levitation. Okay, so I think the full title of this documentary was Something Something Coral Castle, Semicolon, Telekinesis, Telekinesis and Anti-Gravity. Uh, it had to be In Search Of. I don't... Because Leonard Nimoy used to do the In Search Of. Uh, yeah, I don't think... Was it like an old oh, 70s God. show? It had to be. Like, it was... Yeah. You know how, like, older videos have, like, not like a full sepia tone, but they kind of are, like, washed out? Yeah. That's how it looked. I'll pull it up. It looks like an old photograph. That was the only other thing that I knew that he did that was like, you know, like, not, I want to say It's called theory. Secrets of Coral Castle with Leonard Nimoy. Hmm. Telekinesis and Anti-Gravity. Documentary. Posted oh, so by Leonard Nimoy. This film. A straight up documentary. Yeah. This film highlights the amazing stonework of, at Coral Castle. Uh, let me see if I can figure out when this was. 1973. Six. 78. But anyways, uh, it, it was really, really good. I mean, like, for what they knew at the time, you know what I mean? So anyways, this was like talking about like, they think that in at this point they thought that that he had done something more akin to however they they would have built like the pyramids and stuff. Well, he actually said that that he had knowledge on how they built the pyramids, and that's that's how I he now, built this. Yeah, I think, I think his tell. quote was, "I now possess the knowledge that the uh, ancient uh, Egyptians Egyptians had." I think, I think so. Too. I have it here someplace. <clears throat> um. So, but like he would tell people. Like he wouldn't let people w- watch him work. Now, obviously, I guess this is untrue, but he said that, or they said that, um, people would like come to spy on him, and he would stop working. He would like wave at them and wait for them to leave, and that's why he ended up ultimately mo- moving because he was like three yards of, off of somebody else's house or something. Right, you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. Um. But ultimately like most older documentaries are, there's no, like, clear answers or anything like that. It was just talking about, like, how anti-gravity has been used, like, not in, like, any kind of, like, woo kind of way, but, like, in a real kind of way, where, like, you can stack things in a certain way, and it uses, like, their natural balances to create, like, an anti-gravity type of... Okay, well, that mu- they must be talking about the door. Yes. The, the, that door that swings? Yes. The and metal, they, the, hold on, there's two doors. No, it's the, the it's, metal door it's or the not, coral it's, door? It's, it's, it's door. not a coral okay. door. It's, it's the limestone door. door. Yes. <laughs> but, but they explained that. Did you see that? I did not. Uh, uh, it's uh, in my notes. It's in my notes. Fill me in. It's in my notes. Okay. You wait to get there. But, excuse me, but that's that's what this documentary was about. And it was, you know, people who who had known him or who had been there for part of, you know, what, whatever was happening. And it was just all very mysterious. He didn't tell people a whole lot, Like he didn't tell anybody what he was doing or how he was doing it. And, um, you know, like I said, he would make precautions. So like the local kids couldn't get in and, and, and all this different kinds of stuff. And it was mm-hmm. like that, that stone door is like two tons or something like that. The stone door and they just explanation is in the next paragraph after this. But that's so that's that's what it was all about. Telekinesis, how he moved these blocks, like how else would he have done it? Like why wouldn't he let anybody watch him? I think he was just an eccentric guy that He was really obviously smart. a little bit snapped, you know what I mean? Like yeah, he was very bit, sickly. Little, he fell in love with this girl and she broke his heart. Broke his heart. Uh, he never was gone. There was a, um I don't know if you have it written here, Mike, but they said that he literally lived on Yes, it's in here. The food? Mm-hmm. Okay. Um <clears throat> But so we'll you go, say it. We'll, okay, so he lived on he was ninety pounds and he yeah. lived on sardines and crackers. For That's all he ate. That's all he ate. And then he ended up like 
dying of liver failure later on. Oh, Jesus. Son of a... Turn it off. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> it. I give up. <laughs> so we go back to the the, uh, the eight-foot Virgo stones that make up the perimeter are perfectly uniform. They're, they're, they're perfectly level, perfectly uniform. Yes. There's no variation between them, and no sunlight comes between them. His living quarters, walls consisting of eight-foot-high pieces of stone. Now, uh, this is what I want to touch on, the, the accurate sundial. Have you ever seen the sundial? Yes. I've seen a picture of it. So post the picture of it if you can with this, but it's weird. It, it looks like a half ball, and there's like this. They look like figure eights all throughout the like the half ball, and you, you go like this. You take your thumbs. You go. That's half hour, one hour, hour and a half like this, like that, and then it's all weird. Like this is the this is the winter equinox. This is the summer, fall, and. Hmm. Uh, oh, hold on. Summer, winter. They're they're all equal. You know what I'm saying? I can't think of the other. They're one. all equinoxes. Yeah. No. Uh, 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 solstice. Solstice. So, it's yeah. summer, winter, solstice, and yeah. fall and fall, spring equinox. Fall and spring. And wherever you like, place your thumbs or your fingers, it you and like they did it. Like it was really cool. So you could see how long the day was. Yeah. The guy goes like this. He's like, it's all according to shadows. I wonder if so he did like this with it. his finger, and then the shadow hit there. And he goes, oh, I think it's about eight thirty. And some lady checked it with her with her watch. She goes, "Yep, it's eight thirty. It's like, "Holy shit!" That's like this cool. this guy is like he's on a different level. Yeah, you know he's very like when you he find learned him, all that stuff. Like he had nothing else to do but learn. Right. So you think like people that don't go to school are dummies, but you're wrong. Yeah. Well, My so best out friend there. did not graduate middle school. He's probably really smart. He is. Like he does so much stuff. He like. Just I'm not advocating to skip school. No, no, no. no but, school, but. but if there are just certain people, and it's not everyone, and it's not everyone that drops out or everyone that you know quits or whatever. But there are certain people that it, you're just meant for something different. Yeah, I think you have with like these super ultra smart people, like uh, uh, Tesla. Uh, what do you say, um, Mike Zellner. Zellner, who's the guy? The uh, Howard, Howard Hughes. Howard Hughes. Oh yeah. This guy, yeah. Edward Leeds Gallon, like they're all super smart, can build shit, yeah. and have these great ideas. They were just made just, in a different time, and they they all they're all weird. They all go mm-hmm. nuts. Einstein, yeah. So, Nostradamus, <laughs> Nostradamus. <laughs> uh, so this is all the stuff that they built. He built there, an accurate uh, sundial, a polar telescope. An obelisk. An obelisk? Yes. A barbecue. Oh, oh I love the, barbecue. The telescope thing? Should I just stop and let you go? Yes. Okay. Again, continue. So it's like these little <laughs> rock, like, they look like little scopes. And there's wires in mm-hmm. between them, like a crosshairs. And depending where you look through them, and you can see the sun, and you can tell, like, which... I forget what it was, but like it, the sun lines up perfectly in the crosshairs yeah. of these little holes that he bored through these two different. Uh, 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 what the fuck is a stone called? The, limestone. Uh, the limestone. limestones. And yeah, just just food you, for you thought. could call coral. Food for thought. Food for thought. <laughs> I, I, thought I, I, wanted, I wanted to, I wanted to like know more about it, but I kind of screwed up. But that's what it was. It was like you can look through the crosshairs right. through two different holes. And so definitely anything that we're mentioning that you don't see pictures of, you should look it up because Yeah, I don't have pictures cool of stuff. each thing individually. If you can find them, I though, just have overviews. Them They're pretty cool. And there's like a water well. Yeah. And a fountain. Celestial stars and planets. <sighs> that's pretty cool. And numerous pieces of furniture. The furniture included a heart-shaped table. A table in the shape of Florida, uh, twenty-five rocking chairs, chairs resembling crescent moons, a bathtub, beds, and a throne. That this guy. Okay. With a few exceptions, uh, objects are made from single pieces of stone weighing fifteen short ton. A short ton is two thousand pounds. A regular ton is like twenty-three hundred pounds. So it's just shy of a ton. So it's like half. I don't, not half. Not anywhere near half. It, it's a U.S. measurement. It makes no sense to me because I don't think we even use short tons anymore. So but it's, it's a it's, lot. It's, it's, it's a small ton. It's a short ton. Okay. I the don't largest stone understand how I get this. 20 <laughs> short ton. Yeah. A nine short ton. I don't know what the eight to 
uh, revolving eight foot eight point two tons. <clears throat> okay, eight. Yeah, eight Jesus point, yeah. Christ! That's, that's like, nine that's short tons is around eight point two. In this case, it was eight point two tons. That's like four over eight gas but over, Yeah, over eight, but smaller than nine. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. So this. Revolving this eight foot it. tall gate door made of limestone that was weighed as much as like four SUVs. Uh, it's a famous structure of the castle and has been featured on TVs in search of, and that's incredible. The gate, go ahead. I thought you want to say something. Mm-mm. I'm just listening. <clears throat> the gate is hard so that it fits within a quarter of an inch of the walls. That's fucking impressive. Yeah, I know. It was well balanced, reportedly, so that a child could open it with a push of a finger. The mystery of the gate's perfectly balanced axis and ease with it, uh, with which it revolved, lasted for decades until it stopped working. And I, oh, I didn't know it stopped working. Yeah, probably because people wore it down. People used it too much. Yeah, I guess so. Well, wait to see how he made it. You'll know why it wore down. Okay, can I guess before? Go ahead. And you can tell me if I'm right or not. You read the head. Go ahead. Is the top just a little bit peaked? No. Okay. Hmm. Uh, no, you're wrong. <laughs> in order to remove it, six men and a 50 short ton, 45 ton crane were used. Once the gate was removed, the engineers discovered how Lead Scallon had centered and balanced it. He had drilled a hole from the top to bottom. Really? And inserted a metal. Okay, so the metal shaft wore down. The, the, truck, just, the truck bearing wore down. That is just like too normal. I know. Like that's not magnificent at all. The, the truck bearing, the truck bearing rusted. I mean, and that's it great. That's awesome. Like it's, it's amazing the fact that like he made this by himself. But like, you're just expecting it to be like, yeah. oh, don't let me talk about this cool I thing. I think that's going to be the sad thing about this whole thing. Is like it's not, not sad, but not sad, but it's it's, it's intriguing. Like it's he, you like, can't acknowledge. He did it himself with what he had. What he had. Yeah. Well, they he said he used old, old cool. car parts and and he used yeah. Yeah, used lumber and yeah. The rock Fast. rested on an old truck bearing. It was uh, the rusting out of this bearing that resulted in the gate's failure to revolve. Complete with the new bearings and shaft, it was set back into place on July 23rd, 1986. And oh, it, okay, so they got it back working. And it failed again in 2005. Sons of bitches. Probably seems like double the people going there and spinning this fucking thing. Well, What's they, about the same amount of time, isn't they it? They said it didn't, it didn't rotate the same after 2005 when they re- repaired it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was probably worn down, you know doors never fit the same way ever nope. again so um after the move uh, he would ask for a donation of 25 cents for the net for a tour but allow visitors to enter if they had no money there were signs carved into the rock at the front gate ringing bell twice he would, the signs are really cool I look he, them. He, yeah. he would, they would ring the bell and he'd come down from his living quarters in the second story of the castle oh, that's cool and he'd conduct the tour mm-hmm Dude, to have the tour conducted by the man himself. Yes. Yeah, wouldn't that be so cool? He probably smelled of crackers and fish sticks. <laughs> <laughs> hey, come on in. Don't mind the white stains on my pants and shirt. It's the top. He's a genius. It's limestone, I tell you. <laughs> oh, my sweet 16. <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you, that's what they said. And I was like, oh my gosh, who could this woman be? When he asked how he had moved all the heavy stones on his own, he would reply, I understand the laws of weight and leverage, and I know the secrets the, of the people who built the pyramids. Some local residents later remembered that as school children, they had field trips to the construction site of the future Coral Castle, and Leeds Gallon personally explained manual methods of his work. So I know he put out books of like magnetism and levitation, and you know, I just, I don't think it was. I think it was just. What well, I'm, I'm telling you, we, we, you watch the video where they explain how they do it. They show him doing it. Yeah. And it makes complete sense. It's block and tackle. Yeah, yeah. I swear, I think we watched the same fucking video. We probably did. It's very slow. It's like. Doo, 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 doo. Yeah. Well, he's he's there pulling the chain. You know how it is. The outside chain runs through the gear. Yeah. And then the inside one goes nice and slow. But I think at some point he decided that this sucks. I'm 90 pounds, and he meant he. You remember that um that like clover shaped uh so stair that he made? The block? Yeah, well that was his AC generator. Yeah, but he I it was all to, block and tackle. I wasn't allowed to talk on about side, that. I lift him up on the other side, and then that metal door that he had 
there was a there was a setup that would just make the the metal bar go like this, the metal door go like this, and that's how he cut all the stones. Hmm. It's I. It's really when you when you look at the whole concept, and this guy explains it to you. He worked on it for like sixty years. Yeah, it it makes sense. It's like oh okay, it's like that's genius, but it's not really like you know I don't think I could think of something. like No, that. exactly. Like so, how did he move the blocks though? Block and tackle. What's that? He had those those wood pyramids. And there was an array of like electromagnetic like capacitors. No, and, no, it's basically like Michael. It's not supernatural. It's not, I'm not electromagnetic going magnetic capacitors it was, are not supernatural. They are perfectly scientific. It was, but it was all it was all it was all mechanical. It was basically like a, an using. electric motor that that would raise and do this whole thing for him. So they he didn't have to do it himself. The the one I watched, they showed him do it manually. Yes, he did it first. And then he, as he progressed, he made that. Remember the wooden an electric wedge. Yeah, it's basically an electric wedge yeah. using electromagnetic capacitors. Well, you make it sound like it's a supernatural thing. No, I'm saying it's not. But you're like there are these electromagnetic capacitors, and he's just like, well, he cut me off. I didn't mean to say that. It was like capacitors, a, a motor, and a stator. Yeah, a lifting winch. And it, the guy shows you even how he lifted the the wooden poles hmm. to get them up. So like, and he he kind of like rocked them back I and just forth. Feel like there's like a bug on my neck or something. They, it's really bothering it, me. Maybe it's just a string on that. It hurt. He, they also showed him moving them into place. Yeah. With a, a, a ratcheting thing. Yes, that's it. Yes, he he had to come along. And it, 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 he pulled the legs together. And the, the the log, he would sit on logs and it would just roll across these logs. And all you gotta do is move the last log, put it in the front, and it keeps rolling. Yeah. yeah. And then he cut he cut the tops of the logs somehow so they wouldn't pass each other. So right. they just interlock. Huh. So they had no place but to go up. Huh. We did watch the scene. You just make sure. You were trying to you're trying to fucking shush me. I'm not trying to shush you. Okay. Okay. I'm gonna okay. break a bottle over your head. Julius Caesar, let's get there. It's not Julius Caesar. Wait, where were we at? What the <laughs> what? <laughs> I saw Julius. Oh, so well, his building, his building methods didn't make him uh, centric enough. He lived on a, an exclusive diet of crackers and sardines. I hope they were sardines in oil. I love or sardines. Mustard. Sorry, or mustard. mustard. I don't eat them. I love them. Not. Gross. Nope. And in later years, he starved himself. I wonder why. He couldn't bear living without a sweet 16 anymore. I mean, he was only 90 pounds. Exactly. It wasn't really hard to starve himself. In November of 1951, he put a sign on the front door, going to a hospital, and took a bus to Jackson Memorial Hospital in Miami. At some point, either before he went to the hospital or at the hospital, he suffered a stroke. 20, 28 days later? He passed away. That's another good horror movie. His death certificate noted cause of death, uremia failure of kidneys as a result of infected and a and an Infection ab- and abscess. And abscess. <laughs> he had no will, and the property passed on to his closest living relatives in the U.S., a nephew from Michigan. Huh. Odd. Um, Coral Castle's website reports the nephew was in poor health and sold the castle to an Illinois family right. in 1953. There's a little discrepancy here, because the person who bought it, in his obituary when he died, said he didn't buy it from the nephew. He said he bought it from the state of Florida in 1952 and was not even aware that the castle was on the land. Get the fuck out. Holy shit. So I tend to believe... So they bought the land from that couple. He bought the land from that couple and the castle was just on that land because he didn't... So the thing is, is there was no deed for that land. He didn't actually buy it. Oh, I see. Wait, no, because then he moved it. He moved it. Oh, yeah, you're right. So maybe something similar happened, though. How the fuck though? would they not know this because gigantic he, coral hey, castle? How's he going to buy the land? The, the, the first part makes much more sense. It passed on to the nephew. The nephew makes then sense. sold it. Right. This guy's obituary could say whatever. He could, they could say he, he invented the, the, the telegraph and, and that could make it true. Yeah. So, let's see. The new owner turned it into a tourist attraction and changed the name from Rockgate to Rockgate Park and later to Coral Castle. Hmm. In 1981, Levin sold the castle to Coral Castle Incorporated for $175,000 and in 
and they maintain ownership today. So, but that Levin or Levin guy, he sold it then, which is the guy right, yeah, that got right. it because it was on the land that he bought. Right. right. And in 1984, the property was listed on the National Register of Historic Places under the name of Rocky, but in 2011, the listing name was changed to Coral Castle. I wonder why they did that. Change it? <clears throat> yeah. Or just call it Rocky. Change well, it. probably a bunch of legality bullshit. Well, because a lot of people know it as Coral Castle. Yeah, but he named it Rocky. Right. But he also renamed it Coral Castle, didn't he? I don't think he did. Well, I'm His creation sure would eventually become known. It eventually known. became known. I think that, it's just not? because the way that he sculpted it makes it look like coral. Uh, it was named Coral Castle by the Levin. Hmm. Okay. Well, I mean, it does look like coral because it was in the ocean, so it's getting, you know, pounded by water, and it has, it's like hollow, like coral. Well, but see, this, it, the thing is, it's not hollow because it's sand. So it's solid. Right, but it has like those hollowness. It, it, it to looks, it. It looks yeah, like the yeah. same thing as coral, yeah. yeah. Because mm-hmm. the, those little things are little circles. Yeah. Anyway, th- I thought this was really interesting. I liked yeah. it, absolutely. I liked it better when I didn't know how he did it. Though. So what what other information Just you got there, John? Um, well, that's what I was going to touch on, but you already touched on it because you watched the same thing that I did, was what? that he, it was not supernatural or anything. He basically had these tripods, right. had a mm-hmm. long pole, like pine poles, mm-hmm. and he used come-alongs to just basically lift them up. And then the box on the top, which was his mysterious wooden box where they thought they had the, you know, that yeah. whatever it was. They but, never say yeah, what it is. The one I saw says that box just acts the same way as a plate does on top of a tripod. It yeah, just held the top together. Basically, all he did was he took like an old motor, and, and the way it was like a clover shape. As it's going around and it hits the low spot, it disengages and it lets the it lets the thing come up. Er, ratchets, and then hmm. as it engages again, it lifts up and it hits the low spot and it ratchets. And it's really not it's it's genius, but it's not. Right, you understand? Right, like it's a simple genius. Right, yeah. So like, oh my god, I never would have done that. It's something that had been used in other industries. Yeah, it just they did and they didn't put used it... old car parts, yeah. coils, trash, and, junk. Yeah. Junk that everybody Junk. else would throw away. Yeah. I thought it's, it's it's ingenious. So basically, what this guy That's did good. in this video, I don't know if we can link the video to this. He basically like just re-engineered what he did. Yeah. And was like, okay, this is this is what he did. <laughs> so yeah, pretty interesting. Good stuff. It was very interesting. I like this one a lot. My sweet sixteen. My sweet sixteen. So, anything else? Any other supernatural additions, Lexi? No. Like I said, it was mostly just like the mystery was like the the intrigue at that point. It was pretty cool. I liked it. And it was awesome that it was, you know, led by Leonard Nimoy. So it was very interesting. And it was cool hearing about something that like people thought at the time was supernatural from him. Right. Just because, you know, it's cool to hear that from Spock. (laughs) Yeah. So we took on the Coral Castle. Rock Gate, if you will. Rock Gate, if you will. Now, you go take on the world. Hold on, stop. <laughs> Welcome back to the Shit Show 2.0. Okay, Boomer. Damn, Millennials. Wow. <laughs> Did not know that. Even flirters who were obviously mentally ill. Oh, this is gonna go downhill real quick.